Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. About everything that can be out of adjustment on this shaper is. I'm going to show you the method that I use to get everything back into tram. This is the universal table model, so it's a little different from the standard square box model, but I'm going to show you what I would do if I had a square box model. Now this is pretty basic information. Some of you won't need it, some of you will. It's, a, it's information that I wish was you know, easily available when I got this machine. Sometimes it's just helpful to see you know, the way that somebody else does it. You know, maybe you'll learn something. This is my method, and I hope you enjoy. All right. My first step is always to get this table parallel with this movement. Nothing on this shaper has to be trued up in order for us to achieve this. And the first and most obvious thing is to line up our zeros. Most shapers, tables, rotate. And we can line up our zeros, and that gets us pretty close. But we want to refine it more than that. We want to be within at least, you know, a thousandth or two. So I'm going to bring you a little closer and show you how I do it. Okay guys, we've zeroed the marks on the front of the table. We've snugged up the bolts so the table's not loose, but it's not tight either. We can still manipulate the, the, uh, the angle that it's at. I've got a little stare at 196 here. It's a great little indicator. Comes with a, the whole kit comes with you know a little uh, C-clamp and all the snug and everything that you need for a shaper. And it's a really great little setup for the shaper in my opinion. Got a little button bottom on the end of the plunger here that allows it to easily travel over the T-slot the slots. So that's one I use and I really, really like it. We've got about 10 thousandths preload on it just because we don't want it to go too far down in these slots as we cross over them. So we've brought it down and we've zeroed it on one side of the table and we're going to move across the table and see what our difference is. We're about 41 and a half thousandths high on this side of the table. So we're going to lower this side of the table, but we're not going to lower it. We're going to lower it about, you know, half of that. So about 20 and three quarters. And then we check again. We should have zeroed, but we were within a thousandth or so. Let's go to the other side. Basically, whatever you're off from one side to the other, you just split that difference. So what are we off? About hair over two, hair over two low. So we want to go a hair over one. Raise this side. And, you know, rinse and repeat, basically, until you get zero. You get a constant zero reading between one side and the other. But you definitely want, after you tighten the bolts, you want to recheck, because tightening the bolts can change. You can definitely change your reading. So what are we? Within a 
two and a half tenths. I think that's uh, good enough. Next thing we want to do is work on the y-axis of this table, or front to back. And I'm going to bring you back a little bit and explain to you how I would do that. Okay, we're happy that our table's good left to right. Next thing we want to do is get it true front to back. So, first thing you do is raise the table to about the working height that you need it for the job that you need to do. Run the ram back and forth and check the reading. Chances are it's going to be low out front. Lower and lock your front table support. Continually run the ram back and forth and manipulate the raise and lower of the box, you know, handle it just, just slightly. And that should torque the box enough to where it comes into zero. Lock your up and down movement and make sure it stays zero. You want your table to be in its most accurate position when it's locked. I think that's pretty important. On this particular shaper, if I lock the up and down movement, it raises the table on the outside here or on the front over half a thousandths. You know, that's substantial. It's substantial enough for me to account for anyway. You want your table to be its most accurate when it's locked. If you do that, you'll remember to lock it. So that's pretty basic. You know, not, not hard to get the table true front to back. Next thing we need to worry about is the compound. And it's easy too. I'll bring you in a little closer and show you how I do it. Alright guys, here's the setup. We've got a stare at six inch machinist square. We've got our 196 C clamp here, clamped to a tool bit, and this is the tenths indicator. I've lined up my zeros and I've snugged up the bolts. I haven't done the final tightening on them because we want to bump this around until we get a zero reading. That is if you want to be 90 degrees to the table. If you want to set this compound up at a precise angle or you know even a somewhat precise angle you know of course you'd use your graduations on your on the head or you know if you don't trust those you know get an accurate you know combination square you know this will or protractor head set your angle double check it with this if you want to be more accurate than that you know you would get the precision ground angles Reference them off your table, run your indicator, set your compound at that angle, and run your indicator along that angle until you get, you know, zero. It's really basic. And this method's quick and easy. You know, you just slide your square up and bring it to zero. We've just lined up the, we've just lined up our zeros here. That's, that's it. You know, just by eye, as close as we could get it by eye, because I wanted to see how close, you know, these marks are on this machine. Every machine's going to be different, and you'll want to check yours. But by eye, you know, I got this within a few tenths. And this is not a setup. You know, this is, uh, this is true. I'm within a few tenths over five inches that was luck but if you line up the marks true you know as true as you can by eye you'd be surprised how accurate you know some of these machines are some of these graduations are extremely accurate I've seen them that aren't but on this machine they seem to be pretty good so that's the way I set up the compound like I said, if I wanted to do it at a precision angle, I would use precision equipment to gauge it from. The precision ground angles are really nice. I don't own any, but if I wanted a precision 10 degree angle, I would use a precision 10 degree angle off the table with a dialer or test indicator. And I would run it along that until I had a zero reading. All right, we got our table, you know, within reason right to left and front to back. We got our compound squared up. 
If we were going to be working off the table, you know, we're good to go. We bolt our work to the table and we do the operation that we need. But if we're going to go and put a vise on this machine, you know, that changes things. That adds extra weight to the table. And who knows if the vise is correct anyway. Unless you've checked your vise after you've trimmed in your table and compared the two, who knows how true it is. Some of these old shaper vices are not that great. Mine wasn't, so I had to do some machining on it, but I got it back within reason. So if you're going to be working out of a vise, tram in the vise. The table doesn't really matter. You know, it's the vise. It's what your work's going to be referencing off of anyway, so... Working off the table, tram the table in. You work off the vise, tram the vise in, both fixed jaw, lengthwise, and across. Because it makes a difference. These old shaper vices are not the modern milling machine vice with the, you know, locking movable jaw like a modern, you know, the modern Kurtz. They're more crude than that. So check it. Know your vice. That's pretty important. Now that we've got our table correct, I'm going to put the vice on here as if we were going to be working at it. I'm going to tram it in and I'm going to show you how I do that. We got our vise on here now, and it's loose. I like to set my fixed jaw, you know, if the work allows, to where the fixed jaw is parallel with the movement of the ram of the shaper. Everybody's got their own preferences to they like to work against the fixed jaw, you know, it's the most stable and whatnot. <laughs> the reason that I like to set my fixed jaw to where it's parallel with the movement is because more than once, you know, and I try to do my best to, you know, make sure everything's secure, tight, and whatnot. More than once, I've left the tool bit loose in these machines. You know, you're doing a fairly complex operation. You've got multiple cutters, you know, for you know, right angles and finishing and whatnot. You lose your cutter, or you leave your cutter loose. You stick it in there by hand. You, you know, you tighten it, and then you go about some other operation because you haven't quite set it up yet. Well, you forget. And if this vice jaw or the you know vice was perpendicular to the movement and this tool bit dropped below the vice jaw, you know, in this machine machine anyway, you know, a five eighths bit is small. You know, you're talking three quarter, an inch even piece of tool steel, something's gonna break. You know, even a quarter inch piece. You know, that's a you know, you're talking about flying shrapnel, possibly damaging a machine. It's just to me it's not worth it. If the work allows. You know, I like to work with my vice jaw parallel to the movement of the ram of the shaper. Just a little, you know, just a little personal preference, but uh, it is, uh, that's the reason. If I can get away with it. First thing that I usually do, or the first thing I always do, this is real basic stuff here, is zero and then run the indicator along, just like you do on a milling machine. Indicator in the Ram of the shaper, back and forth, adjusting to zero. You want to snug your bolts first, you know, and just tap it around. That's the first operation. I'm going to set that up, and I'll bring you in and show you. Well, we've got our bolts just slightly snug. We've got our zero lined up, and we've got our fixed jaw running parallel with the movement of the shaper. We've got our little tense indicator here, and we're going to just run it up and down and bump this vise around until we get a zero read, or at least as close as we can get to it. Just slightly bump it. get the best reading that we can. Yeah, looks like we're within about a half thousandth or so, and that's about as good as it gets on this machine. And all we did was just bump it around, and now 
We'll tighten these bolts and we'll recheck. Now we want to check the ways of our vise right and left. We bring our indicator down and we get a reading on it. If I can do that. I'll bring in a little closer and then we'll run this back and forth. Get a better view of the indicator here. This is a tense indicator. And it looks like we're within about four tenths. This, this vice was machined after the by me after the table was trimmed, so I haven't done any adjustment to the table. But if you did this and you had a reading, you would move your table, of course, to account for the whatever the vice is off. If you're going to be working out of a vice, you know your part's going to be referencing off these ways. You're going to be setting parallels in here, and it's going to hold your part. And if if your part's you know cocked. It's going to show in the machining. If you want it to be right, you've got to indicate in every axis that you can. So if we've done this one, we're good. If we've done this one, we're good. Now we need to run across this. All right, to check my vise front to back, I just take a parallel, just one that I trust, and set it across the ways. If your vise is solid, of course you wouldn't need this, but I just bring it down and then running the ram back and forth. Pretty basic, but it is the way you do it. And the way that I do it anyway. And you just run a ram back and forth and check the difference. Over six inches, this one's within a couple tenths. So I think, you know, in my opinion, that's more than satisfactory for a shaper. And if it was out, of course, in my opinion, you would, you know, torque the table with the raise and lower handle while having the foot or the table support down and lock, just like you would if you wasn't running a box. Well, guys, there you have it. Not necessarily a how-to, but it's a how I do it. And it gets me close. If you're going to work off the table, work off the table. If you're going to work off the vise, tram in the vise. Some of these old shaper vices, not all that accurate. This one wasn't. I had to machine it in myself. But now, I trust it. I can tram in my table, set the vise on there, work in the fixed jaw, and I'm good to go. If you enjoyed this video, share it with a friend. Every time you share this video with a friend, I'll save a baby bird from falling out of a nest. And I think that's pretty important. Don't you? Thanks.